Hello and welcome to Baselight version 5.2. Um, this is the first tutorial in a collection of videos that will focus on the practical applications of Baselight from an assistance point of view. I'm currently a conform assistant in London and I've been on Baselight for about six months now. Um, so I am still fairly fresh, but we'll go through all of the basics that I've learned so far and we'll break down some conforming and grading concepts in later videos. Um, but for now, um, let's get into it. I've just opened up Baselight, so let's have a look at a scene and we can um, start to analyze uh, all of the docked views in this workspace. So if we go um, up to our views tab and go to job manager, you can see that it's separated into three columns, host, job, and scene. So on your host column, it should show all of the available Baselights that are available on your network. Okay, so at the moment it's just my laptop. Within your host, you've got all of your available jobs. You can think of a job like a project, okay? So if you uh, had a feature film or a music video or a television show, you'd have a job named as such. Within your job, you would have scenes. So your scenes are like your timelines, okay? So um, for this hypothetical feature film, I would split it into five hypothetical film reels. So each scene would contain about 20 minutes worth of film. But for now, let's jump into my tutorial job and my Baselight UI scene. And we're going to open that up here. And we're going to close the job manager using Control J, the hotkey. Okay, so let me just tab forward um, a few shots. And um, let me just bypass this temp grade I was playing with. Okay, so we are currently in the standard workspace. Okay, there's a couple of views that I don't really need to see at the moment, so I'm going to hide them. If I go over to the histogram and I control right click and hide the histogram, and if I control and right click and hide the gallery, it gives me a little bit more space over here. I'll shift this over. Um, what I also might do, this is the parameters view up on the top left. Um, there's a little disclosure triangle, which I'm just gonna hide those additional operators so I can drag this out a little bit more. Okay, that's looking good. So on the top right, you've got your uh, image display. So this would normally be on a dedicated reference monitor. Below, you've got your cut view. So these are the thumbnail views of all your shots in your scene. Um, you can command or control click to jump to any shot um, in the cut view. And below the cut view, we have the timeline. So this is fairly standard. Um, you can see all of the clips currently laid out in the timeline there. Um, to navigate the timeline like I just did, you hit command, middle mouse button, and you drag. So command middle mouse button dragging horizontally goes like that and then command middle mouse button dragging down vertically allows you to adjust the layers that way okay so that's a nice quick way to navigate through your timeline um, you can also shift and then press middle mouse button and that'll jump you to particular clips okay so that's the timeline um, as you can see, it's layer-based instead of uh, node-based, like DaVinci Resolve. So um, these are clips, and then you add your grade stacks um, as such, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, okay, so moving along, uh, you can see on this uh, blue cursor here, we have cursor number one selected. So the cursor has an interesting relationship to how you view your image, okay? So we're looking at cursor one, and you can see in the cursor view over here that we're viewing our image at HD, at a high resolution, in a particular color space. So I'm on my laptop at the moment, so I'm viewing it in an sRGB color space. So for this music video, I shot it with a 2.39 aspect ratio in mind. So if I go to my viewing format, I can change how we're viewing our image display. So if I go to uh, DCI 2048 by 858, that's a 239 aspect ratio uh, resolution. So if I click this guy, you can see that now we are viewing it in the intended aspect ratio. Um, alternatively, I could change this back to HD. So now we're viewing it 16 by 9 again. Um, and I can go down to this uh, disclosure triangle and I can add a couple of parameters here. A guide as well. And now on my 16 by 9 image, I can add a 239 mask. So two ways to do the same thing here. Okay. Um, I can also, to give a bit of context, I could add a full area guide. This shows us our image bounce 
of the image. That's the cursor view. So cursors are very powerful and I'll delve a little bit into them later. So quickly moving on, um, over here is your playback controls. With this cog, you can choose things like you can loop the current shot that you're playing and you can change the playback speed. So this is your playback controls. This applies to uh, your cut view and we won't really focus on this at the moment. Uh, the more important thing to have a look at is your parameter view. There's some more options here, which include audio, and you can add um, other parameters, like if you want to do transforms and stuff, but we'll just leave this section for now. And oh, we'll change it to the sequence tab. So because we're looking at a shot, so we're not looking at a grade strip, we're looking at a shot, it is displaying in the parameters view um, the information about the shot. So it's, um, if we drag this out a little bit further, it tells us the name of the file. Um, it tells us, if we click this here, um, it'll tell us the start and end time code, uh, the record time code of the base light timeline. It'll say how long the shot is. So this is a four second and eight frame long shot. Um, we can also change its color on the timeline. Um, we can also change how this information is displayed. So if we wanted this in frames, we could change that. So this shot is 108 frames long. Um, let's change this back to white. Uh, it'll tell you where the shot is on the server. So this is on my hard drive. Now, the two really important things are input format and input color space. So when I insert shots into my timeline, I need to make sure that they've been brought in in the right resolution and the right color space. So this was shot on a on my Sony A6500 and I shot it in S-Log. So I need to make sure, let's see, I accidentally change it to film log and you can see that the color space changed a fair bit if I drag this back out. So if I put this to the wrong color space, it's gonna put me in a bad place to start grading. Um, you need to match up what your color space is to the correct color space that was shot for your camera. So I shot an S-Log3, so I'm gonna make sure to set this as my input color space. And I know that um, Baselight is interpreting this in the right way. There's a couple more things down here which I won't really get into. Um, this one's quite a useful one. This increment field is your speed. So this is currently playing at 100% speed, but if I change that to two, it would be playing double the speed. And if I change that to 0.5, um, it would be playing back at half speed. Okay, so you can change your speed based parameters um, in a very simple manner. And you can also reverse your clip here. So that's the basic overview of the base light user interface. Bear in mind that normally this uh, UI is split over two monitors, and then this part of the image is on a dedicated reference display. So again, to add or to hide things, you hit control right click. So I could insert a RGB parade and other things, but obviously my screen real estate is very limited for these tutorials. So I'm just gonna control right click and hide this guy. Um, alternatively, I could have floated. This means that I could um, just drag this around my screen whenever I'm uh, whenever I don't need to see the cursors, I could put it there. Um, so that's a, another useful thing that you can do. You can float windows. So that is the first sort of uh, glimpse into Baselight. In the next few tutorials, we'll go over some more common tasks and we'll uh, demystify some more of the uh, Baselight interface. Uh, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next video.